Well, good morning, everyone. Of course, this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. This is the day that God made. Again, when we say that, that means that the devil didn't create nothing. The devil don't own nothing. And so, therefore, he don't deserve to rule anything. Praise God. God made this day. God created this day, and he created it for me and you. Praise God. God bless you, Lisa. Welcome. Montoya, welcome. Frankie, God bless you. Welcome. Diane, welcome to uh, Praise God this morning. Hallelujah, it's a great day. As I said, the devil didn't create nothing no matter how much he tried to rule in your life today. Remember this, he didn't create nothing. And he don't deserve to rule anything in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Cheryl, God bless you. Praise God. Holla, all of you that are here to with, there with me, praise God. You know, every day is a blessed day. And, and it's a blessing because God made it. And some things I'll be sharing with you today are, are indicative of uh, the fact, not that, not the hope, but the fact that God says you are more than a conqueror. You are not becoming a conqueror. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. That means that the, that the victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross was for you. He did it in your place, acting in your stead. So therefore, everything he accomplished on the cross, he put it on your account. <laughs> Glory to God. He took your account on the cross. Wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, and in exchange, he gave you his account. By his stripes you're healed. All your sins are forgiven, praise God. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Pastor, Pastor Anton. God bless you, man of God. Welcome today. Hallelujah. So we're, so we're excited today. We're excited because we know that we are on the winning team. <laughs> Glory to God. Virginia, welcome. Mary, welcome. Praise God. God is faithful this morning. Amen. Now, Take another 30 seconds, wait for a few people to come on. But I just want to let you all know that I'm excited about the things of God today. I'm excited about the Word of God I'm going to share with you this morning. I'm excited because we know that we're on the winning team. And our head coach, the Lord Jesus Christ, glory to God, knows how to coach a winning team. Praise God. You know why? Because he is a winner. Praise God. He's a winner. Glory to God. And because he's a winner... And when we are his body in the earth, we are winners in Jesus' name. And we are here to demonstrate the victory and be trophies of his major win. Glory to God over Satan, sickness, disease, poverty, failure, praise God. We are examples. God bless you, Pastor Esau, all from Kenya, my brother in Kenya, one of my MTI graduates, all in Kenya, praise God. Welcome, man of God. Praise God. God is faithful. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> Today I'm going to share with you something that I believe that is important, especially as we're embarking upon this new year, and uh, many people are beginning to develop their plans and their, their goals for next year and things like that, and uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, God put in my heart to not wait until New Year's Eve to come up with New Year's resolutions, but to really begin to share with you some things that's going to cause you to be successful, and I use the word successful that I mean that the things that you declare at the beginning of the year, when we get to December the 31st, we'll look back at what we declared in December and uh, January, uh, uh, or you know, uh, we declared in December 31st on New Year's Eve night. We're going to look back at New Year's Eve night on 2020, and we're going to see a perfect picture that everything we declared by the Spirit of God, based on what God put in our heart, that was going to take place that week that year. It's going to, we're going to see it have happened, amen, in December, uh, December the 31st, 2020, amen. God bless you, Tammy. Welcome, my daughter, amen. Glory to God. God is faithful. Now, okay, you ready? Let's get going today. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about how to believe you have what you receive with the emphasis on believe. How to believe. Because one of the challenges that people have, uh, let me see, of Virginia... Yes, go ahead, Virginia. As a matter of fact, I, I, you know, she, she says, is all right to share this year prayer page? Yes, please go ahead. All of you, feel free to share what I'm teaching right now. Feel free to share that. Matter of fact, you can share it and, and as many times as you want to share it, like it, everything, praise God. Because the whole goal, we want to continue to enlarge our audience. Amen. So feel free to do that. Thank you, Virginia, on that. Now, so I'm going to, God put in my heart to put, make an emphasis today on believe. And we're going to go in our Bibles. If you have your Bibles, go to the Bibles in the book of Mark chapter number 11. And verse number 24, Mark chapter 11 and verse number 24. And Jesus has just finished cursing the fig tree. 
and the disciples are overwhelmed by that. They said, Lord, the tree that you just cursed has now withered away. And so Jesus tells them in verse number 22, have faith in God, which the, the original says, have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith. And then Jesus goes on in Mark 11, 23 and goes on to explain them to them how the God kind of faith works. He said, for verily I say unto you, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, just like I just did to the fig tree and shall not doubt in your heart. But shall believe, but shall believe, that's the, that's the point right there. But shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, then you shall have whatsoever you say. The emphasis there is on you have to believe that what you say shall come to pass. You will have whatsoever you say. And then it goes on to continue that in Mark eleven twenty four. He said, therefore I say unto you, what things, what things, whether it's a mountain, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's a business, whether it's a ministry, whatever things, therefore, based on what I just said, you desire when you pray. Next word, believe. That's the word. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You shall have them things that you believe. The emphasis this morning is on believe. Now the whole point is then, Pastor, how do I believe I have it? <laughs> how do I believe that? How do I, you know, you said if I believe that I have it, I'll get it. So the whole goal is how do I believe that I have what, I'm, uh, what I desire? So we're going to talk about it a little bit today. We're going we're gonna to deal with a little bit of emphasis on that today. And the first thing that is necessary and that is that is in the area of your thinking. You know, you will never rise above the level of your thoughts. Uh, the book, let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter number 23 and verse number 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 7. Let's look at that for a moment. Because the whole goal is now that you have to have an image of the desire that you're believing for create it in your mind. In other words, your mind has to have an image of the end result. Are you following? Your mind has to have an image of the end result of that which you are believing. You got that? Uh, uh, and so uh, here in Proverbs 23 verse 7, look what it says there. For as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh in his heart, not in his emotions, because your heart just means the very core of your being, you're the, the inner man. As a man thinketh in his heart, not being moved by what he see, not being moved by what he feel, not being moved by the circumstances, but as a man uh, uh, thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he in other words the image that you have in your mind that's proceeding from a, a goal oriented vision in your heart he said that's who you are right now that is what you are having right now and you've not been able to go no further and you will not be able to go any farther until the image you have in your mind that's proceeding out of the word of God that's in your heart is the same picture as what you're desiring. You got that? So you cannot be desiring and say, Father, I'm believing that I have a uh, uh, thousand dollars and yet your thoughts are still thinking about how am I going to pay this hundred dollar bill? You've got to, you got to totally, you have to totally create an image in your mind by faith in, that, uh, in, in those areas. Now, so think about this now. So therefore, the, the, uh, the, the, having a desire then in your heart, that desire starts in your heart and in your mind. It starts the beginning of faith, the beginning of having it, the beginning of believing it starts in your heart and in your mind. 
You got that? Because here it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, I read years ago, it was called, it was called the Law of Attraction. And it was talking about how the, what, what, how, the, how, how the mind creates. How the mind creates. And this is what it said. It said, all of your thoughts, all images in your mind, and all the feelings connected to your thoughts will later manifest as your reality. You got that? I'll say it again. All of your thoughts, all images in your mind, negative or positive, uh, all the feelings that are connected to those thoughts will later manifest as your reality. That's why I'm going to talk to you about today. You can't afford to just sit up thinking negativity or thinking about something that you know you should not be doing. Because if you, if you allow that thought to, to remain in your mind, it will conceive, glory to God, and give birth as the reality in your life. And you will not be able to receive and or have beyond the thoughts in your mind. Now, look, look, look at this now. In other words, this. It says, every, in other words, everything you have in your life right now, everything you have in your life right now has been attracted, listen to this now, has been attracted to you through your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You got that? And, 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 but sometimes we've been so, I'll use the word brainwashed, in negativity and insecurity and poverty and sickness and disease that we that that's almost the 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 the, the, the reality that we live in because after all everybody's broke everybody's poor everybody's getting sick are you following me uh everybody's dying and and, and so really that's the reality i live in but i gotta renew my mind are you following that i gotta get my mind renewed now to another reality and i've got to change the image in my mind and in my spirit through the word of God. That's why I'm so glad to meet you. You on here every morning. Praise God. I'm trusting God that through the anointing that He's put on my life to bless you, that He's changing. He's changing the image you have in your mind of you, of Him, what He can do in your life. Because Ephesians 3:20 says, Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all we can ask or think, according to the power that's in us. So we start thinking. Not according to our ability, but according to God's ability working inside of us. In other words, let me tell you something. See, you may be thinking about believing God for $100. God's saying, I got something in you. I can, I can call you to believe God for a million dollars. Because all that, the only difference between you and other millionaires is the image they had in their mind of what they believed. I'm going to say it again. The only thing difference between you and other millionaires is the image they had in their mind of what they chose to believe. Are you following me? So as you begin to choose to believe, I am a millionaire. Pastor, I'm not no millionaire. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, God said, I said before you life and death. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. I said before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Choose life. Choose life. <clears throat> I'm sure Abraham, multi-millionaire, chose life. I'm sure Joel, multi-millionaire, chose life. I'm sure David, multi-billionaire, chose life. And they are examples to us that it's not based upon what God can do, but it's what you can believe he can do through you. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Are you following? So the millionaire or the billionaire is who they are because of the way they thought. Because of the way they thought. And guess what? You get 10,000 thoughts at least a day. Why not choose to make them big thoughts? <laughs> Glory to God. Why not choose to think big? Glory to God. Can you see that today? I remember when, when, uh, when uh, you know, for years when I was in church, you know, it, it was just common to always give a dollar. Give a dollar. You got a dollar. Give a dollar in church. And so, you know, then, you know, uh, uh, when I got saved, uh, uh, you know, and born again, uh, they began to start saying, well, let's just become tithers. Once everybody become a tither. Which is good. We, we all should be tithers. Give God a 10% of our income. But then I started getting around other people like Apostle Price, Kenneth Hagin, and Apostle Ivy Hilly and people like that. And they're talking about, you know, starting off the giving at a thousand. People starting off at a thousand dollar offering. 
Wait, oh my God, I ain't been around this kind of thing where you're starting off with a $1,000 offering and then pretty soon they say, okay, we've got $25 offering, we'll start there and we'll go up. Are you following me? But the whole goal was this, there, there, there was, there was talk and the thinking to get us beyond that dollar mentality, to get us beyond that $100 mentality and they said that those that come up, are you following me? In other words, we're going to receive, a, a, we're going to receive the regular offering where you can give how Lord leads you. He said, but those that come up, it's called motivational giving. We're going to start the motivational giving at $250 and up. And there's people that I know personally that started off not being able to get in that line. <laughs> you follow me? You know, with the, they had $10. But praise God, the next year they were in a $250 line, $500 line. And it wasn't, no, it wasn't no manipulation. It wasn't no gimme type thing. It was motivational giving that, that you see other people growing in their faith. And now those people, many are given $10,000, $20,000, $40,000, $60,000 because they chose to think differently about what God could do in their lives. And that's the whole goal. As a man thinketh, as a man thinketh in his heart, not what's in God's heart concerning you, but as a man choose to think in his heart what God is able to do, so is he. You got that now. So... So, uh, so you and I then, listen now, you and I have the ability to change. Listen now, you and I have the ability to change whatever life is throwing at us. And we can convert it into a new set of actions. Listen now, we can convert it into a new set of actions and insights where we can get to where we really want to get. And that happens through our mindset. In other words, through your mindset, the way you set, like a thermometer. It's like you set a thermometer. How you set your mind. You got, remember Bob said, set your things on above? How you set your mind, you, 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 you get into a point, when you set your mind, it allows you, like a thermometer, you to change whatever life is throwing at you. See, you are not the product of what life throws at you. You are the product of how, how you choose, how you chose to respond to that situation. Because, because through our mindset, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he, you and I can convert, glory to God, a whole new set of actions. Uh, you know, through my mindset. In other words, I see what the devil is trying to do. I'm not going to come in agreement with that. I'm, I'm going to think on things that are good, things that are lovely, things that are important. I'm going to think on the fact that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to think on the fact that I'm the, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I'm the lender, not the borrower. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My God supplies all my needs. He is my shepherd, therefore I do not want. And so as I begin to speak that word and, and get my mind renewed with that, then I can literally convert what the devil's throwing at me by a new set of actions and thoughts, are you follow me? And, and, and insights that God gives me, and I can get not what the devil throwing at me, but I can get what I really want based on the word of God. But it happens, the beginning of that happens in my thoughts and in my heart. Because he said, what things of you believe? What sort of things you believe when you pray? Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. And you be the beginning of that believing starts in your heart and in your mouth and in your mind. You got that now. So, Romans chapter, go me to the book of Romans now, chapter number 12 and verse number 2. And we can see that. And in, in, uh, we can see how Apostle Paul talks about that. Because even though you as a believer and, I'm a, and, I, am a, and I as a believer, we're born again. We love God with all our heart. But yet, being a believer does not change your situation. <laughs> you follow me? You know, that's why people say, you know, how can people be so Christian, so loving God, and still be poor, broken, and, and struggling in life? Because salvation gets you into heaven. But you will experience things on this earth based upon how you think. You got that? Listen, look what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. He says this, And be not conformed to this world. But he uses a word, and he says, but be ye transformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's talking to Christians here. He's not talking to sinners. He's talking to Christians who are born again, who love God with all their heart, on their way to heaven. 
<laughs> you follow me? But he's saying you can be you need to be transformed now. And I looked the word transform up this morning, you know, just as I was studying this morning. The word transform means to change into another form. To change into another form. Remember Superman? He went into the he went into the uh, uh, uh tough on boot, Clark Kent. Came out of Superman, praise God, Incredible Hulk. You know, he's, he's a little bitty small guy, but then once he, you know, uh, uh, someone makes him mad enough, he turns into the Incredible Hulk. I think it's bad. It's time for you and I to get mad at the devil, mad at what we're going through, praise God, mad at poverty, mad at sickness and disease, and it'll turn us into that Incredible Hulk, praise God, hallelujah. Amen. You know, Superman, no man, he, he remained Clark Kent on the, until a need was necessary that required his strength. And who he really was on the inside. And I'm telling you, sense of God, it's time to arise out of the, the mediocrity of normal Christian living that the world system has placed us in. It's time for us to be renewed in our mind, which means to be changed into another form. Another word is said for the word uh, uh, transform. It means to reproduce the same image. To reproduce the same image. So what he's saying here is that I want you to be transformed in your mind uh, uh, based upon what you believe in God for. I need you to be changed into that image. I, listen now. I need you to be changed into that same image. I need you to re reproduce the image of the word of God in your mind into the same image. That when I see what's the thoughts that are in your mind and I look at what the word of God says, it's the exact same image. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you wonder, man, where are all these thoughts coming from? Man, I got you be having thoughts and praise God said, where in the world all this coming from? But what's going on, it's not the image of what God is saying. And you said, Pastor, how do I get that all them thoughts in my mind? He said, go and renew. Renew your mind with the word of God and it will what it will change you from the form of negativity and sickness and poverty and lack into the image or the form or the image of Jesus that you are blessed. All your needs are met. You are healed. And, and like I said, it also means to reproduce. So every morning he says, I want you to reproduce the image in your mind according to what the word of God says. I need you to be transformed by the renewing or by the reproducing of the word of God that you are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. You can do what God says you can do. Whether you are presently experiencing it or not, I need you to be transformed. <laughs> Glory to God. Remember the movie called Transformers? Uh, God said, I need y'all to be called my Transformers. Hallelujah. You are my Transformers in Jesus' name. Now, they say 80% of what you accomplish in life uh, is based upon your mindset. Only 20% is based upon skill and mechanics. But 80% of what you, you accomplish in life is based upon your mindset. So therefore, if you got a mindset that is negative, you got a mindset that you cannot have your own business. You have a mindset you got to continue to have a small, mediocre church. And that's your mindset that, that's, that's controlling 80% of what you could grow. It means you could be doing 80% better than what you are right now just by changing your mindset. You know, if you want a large church, go to the book of Acts and see where on the first time Peter preached got 3,000 saved the first day. You know, uh, uh, the next time it said daily in the temple. He said that, that the Lord added to the church daily. And then Acts chapter 4 verse 4 said that over four, I think it was four or 5,000 men got saved. And then I think in Acts chapter 20, somebody said that all Asia got saved. You got to get into the point of getting your mind renewed that, that if you look at the Bible, the book of Acts is our example that God will bring your church into thousands. Not just tens, not just fifties, but into thousands. But you got to go to the book of Acts and see the example. But sometimes if you're not careful, you can be around people who, who think small like that. And you think that, man, I've got 100 people. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting bullets. I've got to go in. But listen to me. That's based upon the world system and, and small church mentality. If you look at the, the Bible, Jesus drew multitudes. Glory to God. So whether you're in your business or whether in your ministry, he drew multitudes. And he, he told the disciples, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do. So the disciples, following his example, 
Following his example, on the first summon, they drew thousands. And then it went on to say that multitudes come. The same way the ministry of Jesus drew multitudes, the, disi the disciples who God released to operate in his stead drew thousands. So I'm telling you, if you're in business, your business can draw millions. But you got to get around people, I've around people that's struggling. Are you following me? Doesn't want to be a blessing to helping them, but you got to get inspired by people that stretch you. Glory to God, that stretch you. I never thought about a multi-million dollar ministry till I was around Apostle Price and Kenneth Hagin them who have $30 million a year ministries. I never thought about thousands until I got around people that thousands was common to them. Are you following me? But if you were around people that say, oh my God, a thousand members, oh my God. No, no, that are wrong people. Talking about a million dollars. Oh my God, no. Get around people that, oh yeah, thousand million dollar men. We know about that. God, we 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 seen God do that many times. Are you following me in those areas? And I know for a fact, because as I was pastoring for 42 years, I saw many members of my, my, my congregation that started off at Philly Dollar, started with a thousand dollars. And I and I saw many of them graduate to giving five thousand dollars, to giving ten thousand dollars, to giving twenty thousand dollars, even to many giving up to two hundred thousand dollars at a time. Are you following me? But I saw them develop at that level. And I'm just telling you right now, saints of God, that as an apostle, I don't just believe this happened. It's now the, it's, it's the image I have in my mind that I know. Paul said, I know in whom I believe. So my 42 years of experience, I know. I'm not just telling you what I believe can happen. I know what can happen if you take hold of the word of God. But you got to have a metamorphosis. You got you to create the image of yourself Based on the word of God, so you got to renew your mind, and that word, the word renew means change the image, change the image, change the image, and you got you got to get the, the image based upon what the word of God says you are. Are you You can't you can't get the image of your mind based upon religion or what people sometimes. And as pastors, you can't allow some deacon board <laughs> to God to control the image that you have in your mind. Some deacons they feel like they're just trying to struggle. Deacons are not. Leaders, De deacons are helps ministry people, and they can you can't let them give you your vision, because th that's why God has a shepherd. I never seen a shepherd get up in the morning and ask his sheep where we're going. You got to be the leader. You got to bring the vision to the people and not let them see what they want to do. Because the sheep, all they're gonna do is say bad, bad. Are you following me? You got to come with the word of God. Bible said when Paul, Acts chapter 16, verse 9 and 10, it said when Paul saw the vision, the people said that's what God has called us to do. So the people would be called to do the vision that you have, but you got to get your thoughts in line. You got you to become a thousand member thinker. You got to become a multi-million dollar thinker. Oh my God, pastor, I'm not into money. It ain't about being in money, it's about doing what God called you to do at the level he told you to do it. It is not the will of God that you be struggling selling chicken to having bake sales. Praise God. It is the will of God. That you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. It is the will of God that all your needs are supplied. It is the will of God that, that, that the young lions do suffer lack and suffer hunger. But the, those that seek God will not want any good thing. That's the will of God. You got you to gotta renew your mind, which means to transform your mind, which means to, to create an image in your mind based on the word of God and in your heart. Because as a man thinketh. So is he. So if you don't raise the level of what you think, you won't let raise the level of what you believe you can receive. You got that? Now, so it's important then, see yourself then in your own mind having it. That's what I mean. See yourself in your own mind having it. See yourself being that and see yourself doing it. See yourself having it in your mind. See yourself... Uh, doing it, see yourself having it every minute, glory to God, of every day, beginning today, that I have it. How do I have Pastor Craig? I have it in my thoughts. The, I have it in the, the image in my mind. I've created the image in my mind that I now have it. I'm now doing it. Oh, it feels great, glory to God. And you begin, it begins to control your emotions. It began to wake up in the, in the nighttime thinking about it. Praise God. You know why? Because now you've created the image. You've renewed your mind. You, you've, been, you've been transformed now by the renewing of your mind. You can begin to start saying, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Why? Because I've been transformed 
by the renewing of my mind. You got that? So, in other words, what it's saying is start thinking like a king. Even if your present, even if your present uh, appearance resembles a tramp. <laughs> in other words, right now, your, your apartment may be, be, may be resembling, you're not a millionaire. You ain't got no house. You ain't got no car. You ain't got no ministry. No. Think like God tells you to think. The Bible says you are kings and priests before him. Start thinking like that. I am a king. I am a queen of God. Are you following me? And, uh, and, and, and the next point is this. Never dwell on negativity. You got to get out. You got to get around all negativity. Everybody speaking negativity get from around them because they're going to put the wrong thoughts in mind you've been around certain people <clears throat> you get around them for a while you, you you go down to the level of their thinking they have you thinking about maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not supposed to do this maybe I'm, I'm not supposed to be a millionaire maybe i'm not supposed to have this large business maybe i'm not supposed to have this large ministry maybe they, what they're saying is true but they're basing it upon their situation and not your purpose that god has for your life god says in the book of jeremiah i know the thoughts i have towards you and they are for good and not for evil to give you an expected end. So God said the thoughts I have for you are good. The plans I have for you are great. And the Bible says many are the plans of man. But it is the purposes of God that will prevail. So you get rid of all the negativity. Get rid of all the negative thinking. Get rid of all the negative people that are surrounding you. And you start believing that you are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. And you can do. <clears throat> and, and are doing. What God says you can do. So don't do it. Look what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians. Let's go to there for a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 5. And we're going to look at this for a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Look at the Apostle Paul said. I'm sure anytime that you are called to greatness, get ready for negativity to come to your mind. Get ready for doubts to come to your mind. Get ready. They said runaway thoughts and uncontrolled imaginations. <laughs> because the devil going to keep trying to feed your mind. He did it with Jesus, didn't he? He took Jesus up to a high mountain. Your father said, I can give you all this. If you, if you come and serve me, the devil going to try to fill your mind with a different way of doing it and lower your expectation and your thoughts. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 5, look what he says here, casting down imaginations. You got that? Casting nine imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, anything that comes in my mind or my imagination that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God, that God is that God is who he says he is. I am who God says I am. God has what he says he has. I got to cast down any imagination. Those, those uh, imagine like videos that's coming to my mind of negativity, of failure, of defeat, or my past failures. I got to cast down all that. You got that? Because I'm, I'm believing now. I'm believing. But I got to cast down all that. And then it says here, next one, and bringing into captivity, bringing into captivity or, or capturing every thought. Every thought. In other words, don't allow yourself to go there at all. Start capturing every negative thought concerning who you are, what you have, and what you can do in Christ. Because it's not about being able to afford it. It's about being able to believe it. Glory to God. Because he said, if you can believe, all things are possible. But the beginning of your belief begins in your heart and in your mind. Amen? So think about this. You and I, therefore, get what we think about, whether we want it or we don't want it. Our thoughts determine our destiny, according to the scriptures. In other words, your thoughts and my thoughts are the most powerful force in the universe. Amen? Uh, I, I got to stop looking back to what, I, what, what other people done did. Stop looking back to my failures. You got that? And I got to start saying, I am who God says I am. If God has given me a multi-million dollar ministry, I have a multi-million dollar ministry. Okay, mine. You, mine, you, are, you have a multi-million dollar ministry. A business, you are a multi-million dollar business. I'm recreating that image in my mind right now. Because that's who I am now. And I'm not going to let any thought that comes to me that's not tell me that. Any imagination that comes to me is not telling me that. I'm going to cast that thing down. Because if anybody's ever done it, we can do it too. 
Get rid of the, the thought that it's something, it's something wrong with advancement, something wrong with prosperity. Those are old mindsets that Satan put, and he's using a lot of people to put that in Christians' minds. Everything on this earth belongs to God. The silver and the gold belongs to him. Get that old image out of your mind in those areas. Cast that thing down. Bring every thought. That means capture every thought that comes to you that is negative. Because they say any thought that is not spoken will die unborn. So don't allow yourself to meditate on those thoughts and speak those thoughts. Let those negative thoughts die unborn. Cast them down. Bring them into captivity in Jesus' name because God has a purpose for your life and you're going to make it and succeed in 2020 in Jesus' name. You got that today? Amen. So, uh, so therefore, I decree on the day on this, on this uh, 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 Facebook page that you attract from this day forward who you are and what you think about. And I decree that every thought that comes to your mind manifests in your life based on the word of God. Amen? As a matter of fact, Paul said in Acts, I'm going to read the verse, first part of this. You can just write it down if you have to. Acts 26, verse number 2. And just write that and, and think about what he says here. Acts uh, 26, verse 2. He said, Paul said, I think myself happy. He said, you want to be happy? He said, you can think yourself happy. Glory <laughs> to God, are you following that? I think myself happy. I think myself prosperous. I think myself healed. I think myself victorious. I think myself I'm an overcomer. Are you following me? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Can we make a confession together? Can we make a confession together? I want you to make this confession with me right now as we, as we get ready to close. Say this to me. Say, I am the image of the things I desire in my thoughts, words, and actions. Say this. So I have them in my thoughts every minute of the day. I am what I think. All my thoughts, all images in my mind, and all, in, and all feelings connected with my thoughts manifest as my reality. Everything in my life now is attracted through my mind. Say this with me. So I take whatever life throws at me and I convert it into a new set of actions, insights that get me what I really want through my mindset. Say this, I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. Say this, so I create ways to have the things I desire while I'm sleeping because my mind is creating it. Say, I never dwell on negativity. I get what I think about. My thoughts determine my destiny. Say this, I cast out imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, I bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So my thoughts are the most powerful force in the universe. There is no looking back. I get what I think about. I am a living magnet. Mm, glory to God. I get what I put my energy into. I attract in my life whatever I think about. I manifest my dominant thoughts and I draw to myself that which is like me, how I think and how I believe. In Jesus' name. I am a happy person. I think myself happy. Amen. Praise God. Will you receive that today? Now, I want to say this to you. If you would like the notes that I'm sharing with you on, the, on this Facebook page, I would like to be able to share that with you as my partners. All you have to do is uh, you can message me on Messenger right there. And just and I need your email address and say, Pastor, please send me today's notes. And then I'll get the notes to you as my partners. Praise God. We're doing this together. Amen. And then I encourage you to listen to this again and again and again. Share with your friends because I'm telling you something. That God is transforming your life and my life through the way we think. And I'm declaring, praise God, that today your thoughts are going to make you happy. Praise God in Jesus' name. So, uh, again, I want to welcome you to become my partner. 
uh, I, there's a link on, on the Facebook page there that says partnership. You can click that link and, and whatever law it leads you to do, partners is what helps we together. I, I, my partnership is showing into you the word of God. Your partnership is helping to support uh, your family what we're accomplishing throughout here and around the world. Uh, your family is an apostle. So you're partnering with me, but together we're making this thing happen. So you have to do is whatever God leads you to do. Uh, you know, you're partnering with me on that. And you say, Pastor, this is what the Lord has led me to give today. And, uh, and you click that link. It'll take you right to a link and you can partner with me. And I'm setting myself in agreement with you for supernatural results. Amen. The only if you see this shirt that I have right now, uh, this shirt that I have on right now, I'm getting this right now. I'm going to be offering this to my partners. I think because of the camera is like backwards right now. It looks backwards. But it says King Jesus. And in the middle it says I am. Because my ministry is called I Am Ministries. And so uh, that's something we have there that I'm, I'll be making available to my partners. I also got some hats made on it called King Jesus. Praise God. I'll, I'll give you more about that tomorrow. But uh, some of you that may want to get some of these for your Christmas, uh, Christmas and things like that, this will be a part of my partnership. As you're in a partnership with me, we'll be able to sow some things into your life also as being my major partners. Amen. So I'll give you more information on that tomorrow. But I love you very much. And we're looking forward to what God has in store for tomorrow. I pray, I'm telling you something, God is illuminating my mind. And I know why he's doing it. Because he's concerned about you. Because he loves you. And so again, share this, go ahead, go ahead and share it with your friends right now. Share this with people uh, that you know. And uh, uh, if you want the notes, request the notes <clears throat> by messaging me with your email address. And I'll get them right out to you, praise God. Until tomorrow morning, at the same time, this is Dr. Alfred Craig saying, May God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.